Thank you very much, uh, Elizabeth. Um, I hope you can hear me just to confirm before I continue with my presentation. I can hear you clearly. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Uh, I've been asked to talk about the benefits of adopting uh, ESG as a framework and uh, adopting reporting under ESG principles. However, I believe this topic has been well covered by the presenters who have spoken before me. So I've actually changed my presentation and I thought it would be more appropriate and I've sought um, permission from the conveners to, to take this approach to talk more about the practical aspects of our journey in terms of the implementation of these principles. So I will talk through five key aspects. Firstly, the setting up of what we now term the ESG committee of, of, of the board. Previously, we, we used to call it the social and ethics committee. And we've, we've, we've been on a journey that has seen us evolve and adopt a number of reporting frameworks and governance uh, protocols, um, a number of which I will refer to specifically that come from the charter that we've adopted for uh, the ESG uh, committee. I'll also talk to you a bit about the structure of our annual report and how we have factored in ESG reporting into the annual report, and also about the global standards that we are looking to as we, as we go along, along this journey. And then I'll also talk about how we are organized internally to be able to achieve this. So we have set up a committee of the board that is called the, the Environmental, Social and Governance Committee. And I've put on the screen there the directors uh, who are on that committee. So the committee is chaired uh, by Dr. Jacqueline Chimanzi, who is the CEO of the African Leadership Institute. The other members of the committee are Mr. Godfrey Gome, who is um, the former CEO of um, Anglo in Zimbabwe in South Africa. We also have Ms. Tokomoyo sitting on the board, who is the Dean of, of Communications and Public Affairs at Harvard Kennedy School in, uh, in the US. And Mr., or we call him Gibbs, because I, I struggle to pronounce his first name, uh, Gibbs uh, Gasela, uh, who is um, a, 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 an expert at public policy regula and regulation, focusing on information and communications technology in Africa. The reason why I mentioned the structure of this committee is so that you can see the profile of the people that are represented and the diversity of the people that are on the committee. So they're not necessarily accountants like myself, although Mr. Gome is a member of, of ICAS, he is uh, a chartered accountant uh, like myself, but we have diversity in terms of experience, uh, even in terms of geographical location. They there are issues of um, governance and, and social uh, ethics that are different in different communities. And, and, that, and, and it gives us that, that level of uh, diversity. And as we've gone along this journey, what we have found is the diversity and the experience of the people who sit on, on the ESG committee has helped us quite a lot in terms of understanding where the world is moving to. So a number of these board members will also sit on boards uh, in other countries as well, in the US, uh, in South Africa. Uh, and, and that is why we get the diversity and the breadth of experience that, that, that comes through. So that is the, the nature of the committee uh, that we have. So as of the, the, the last uh, financial year and this financial year, we have actually now mandated this committee to be the ESG committee. I will talk about a little bit about the standards that we have adopted. And for this, I'll just take us through to um, an excerpt from our charter. So we have looked at the 10 principles is set, is set out in the U United Nation, Nations Global Compact Principles. And we've actually formally written to the U UN Global Compact to be formally adopted uh, as one of the supporters of, of the 10 principles. We are, we are also looking at the OECD guidelines for multinational enterprises and recommendations regarding corruption. So we've adopted that as one of the, the, the main foundational documents that we would like to, uh, to, to address. And then we're also looking at the sustainable development goals. 
So if you go through our annual report, we actually cover our impact on the SDGs. And we know that these types of conventions are important for governments. Uh, so as far as we interact with government, we have also been supporting uh, the UN locally in, in publicizing the, the SDGs as one of our uh, corporate social responsibility initiatives. And we've also focused on the World Economic Forum Environmental and Social Governance uh, Principles, as well as the ILO Protocol on Decent uh, Work and Working Conditions. These are only some of the ones that, that we've focused on. Obviously, there's local regulation that, that we need to uh, make sure that we follow. And we have formally adopted the Global Reporting Initiative of 2018, and at the end of our annual report, for those who've, who've uh, taken the time to go through it, we then, ish, we then have a checklist of how our annual report then conforms to uh, the Global Reporting Initiative. This journey has taken us many years. So we have been at it probably for the last six to seven years to get to where we are. And we have, we have done it as a matter of voluntary compliance and as a matter of good practice but largely based on the experiences of the directors and the people um, that sit on our board. In terms of how we have organized ourselves uh, as a business, we, we have set up a separate function within our business, which is headed by quite a senior person. And if you go through our annual report, um, we have what we call a message from, from the general manager in charge of sustainability, Mrs. Uh, Fidelia Gandia. And what I wanted to emphasize here is we talk a lot about ESG and reporting, but the importance is not necessarily in what then comes out in a summary that appears in the annual report. It's in the thinking that it brings about as we look at the various, uh, at the various issues. So Mrs. Gandia then heads a function that is in charge of sustainability primarily within the business. And the importance of the function is not necessarily just to gather information. It is actually to implement, to catalog and to report and, su and suggest improvements to the practices, to look at the various frameworks that I've referred to and make recommendations to the business in terms of how, how it is implemented. As an example, I will talk to some of the metrics and, and how they, they help us to address certain aspects uh, within the business. I, I recall that at our last meeting, we were talking about uh, women in the, in the business. So we have targets that we have set, for example, to say how many employees do we want um, and what are, what are our targets in terms of female employees in the business. It's important about in what we do here is, is in the thinking that it brings about 